Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight. Today I want to talk about BRICS and nuclear power. Now the major BRICS countries of China, India and Russia are at the forefront of the use of and the continued building of nuclear power plants to generate clean, sustainable energy. This is while the West has pinned its hopes on the so-called renewables of wind, solar and the BRICS are going all out to develop their nuclear power sectors. In the next two decades, China will build 93 new nuclear plants, up from its current 59, for a total of 142 plants. India's number will grow from 7 to 12, and Russia will remain the same as a good energy mix currently of gas-fired hydro generation, and it's focused on the building of new power plants abroad. Particularly in developing countries like BRICS member Egypt, plus Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. Brazil also has two nuclear plants, with a third under construction. However, that said, Russia has recently put into operation a floating nuclear power plant in the Chukotka region of Siberia, which is built on a very large barge and taken to its location to supply power. This one provides power to this remote region and a major copper gold mine there. It's also plans for another six of these floating power plants over the next few years to bring power to Russia's remote regions. It's also built the world's largest fleet of uh, nuclear-powered icebreakers for the Northern Sea Route, which currently amounts to some 30 ships. Now, just a quick fact to keep your attention. One tonne of natural uranium ore, uh, a nuclear plant produces about 44 million kilowatts of electricity. Now, producing this amount of electricity from fossil fuels will require the burning of more than 20,000 tonnes of coal or 8.5 million cubic metres of gas. So given that solar panels and windmills have produced uh, proved pretty useless in providing cheap, reliable energy, is it any wonder that the BRICS and others are looking to a nuclear-powered future? Now, it's interesting, in uh, 2022, the European Commission was forced to classify nuclear energy as green. And the forecast of the construction of new units and uranium demand was expected to increase. But will these plants ever be built? I doubt it, but given the power of the green lobby, but we shall see. Now, data from the International Atomic Energy Agency's Power Reactor Information System reveals that Russia is building more nuclear reactors than any other country in the world. According to its data, 58 nuclear power reactors are presently being built globally with 23 of those reactors being built uh, by Russia. As per the IEAA, there are currently 412 nuclear reactors operating in power plants worldwide, with a combined capacity of 370.2 uh, gigawatts. Now, Alexander Uvarov, who's a director at Atomic Info Center, has commented that Rosatom is now doing uh, most of the construction of nuclear power units um, outside of Russia and around the world. Interestingly, according to uh, data, Rosatom's direct competitors are actually three Chinese companies, CNNC, CSPI, and CGN. Now, they're building 22 reactors, but they are primarily built within China, and the Chinese partners are actually building five of them together with Russia. Now, regarding what the West is doing to build nuclear reactors, as Uvarov says, we talk about the Americans and Europeans, they're lagging behind by a wide margin. Germany, in particular, has abandoned its nuclear sector, as has Japan to a great extent after Fukushima. Now, previous reports stated that nuclear energy generation, or continuous, uninterruptible, zero emissions electricity, is now being led by China and Russia worldwide. Construction is underway on about 60 nuclear uh, power reactors across 15 nations, primarily in China, India, and Russia. About 70% of the newly constructed power plants are by China and Russia, with only a few reactors under construction um, elsewhere. The United States, which once led the world in nuclear energy, is currently trailing far behind. In fact, the number of nuclear plants in the US will drop over the coming years as old plants reach the end of their life, and it's expected that the number will drop from their current 96 plants to around 70 by 2050. 
uh, although the US is still actually the leader in the nuclear energy electricity generation, which uh, is around 30 percent, but it will be overtaken by China in the next decade. France is also looking to reduce its share of nuclear energy from its current 80 percent down to 50 percent by 2050. Now, Given their massive investments in cutting-edge technology and the expansion of their nuclear power program, it's no surprise that Russia and China are expected to maintain their dominant positions for some time. Now, in addition to being a geopolitical adversary, Russia and China are two, America's two main rivals in the race for zero-emission power generation. Now, Western policy analysts have warned that Nuclear exports are not only profitable, but a valuable tool for their ability to influence the governments of the countries they're built in. And they provide for a goodwill and an appreciation by the host countries of those who are building them. Now, the state-owned nuclear film firms in China and Russia uh, determine the norms for non-proliferation, safety and security when they export their nuclear equipment and technology. Additionally, the advantages are the long-term finance for the construction of the plants and the delivery of nuclear fuel are typically incorporated in the agreements. And that establishes strong bonds and exporting of shared ideals. Now, they tend to finance the construction of these plants. They train all the specialists, supply the nuclear fuel and take away all the waste. And they get their money back from the sale of electricity over that. Now, given that a nuclear plant has a lifespan of about 60 to 80 years. That's a lot of cheap electricity uh, that benefits the host countries and they don't have to pay out front. Now, although Russia has steadily advanced in creating a global footprint in the nuclear sector following the 2011 catastrophe at Fukushima, construction plans in Japan, United States and Europe and are mainly shelved. The UK is trying, but whether that comes to anything, I don't know. Uh, but it's caused a lot of the slowdown and shutdown of the associated sectors in this, these nations. Now, despite the mounting criticism and sanctions from Europe uh, um, and the US, Russia has the most significant number of reactors and it will continue to remain the major player in the nuclear power industry globally. Now, uh, quite recently, Putin took part in a ceremony commemorating the first delivery of nuclear fuel to the power station in Turkey, which is uh, still under construction, but is expected to be launched in the next year or so. This is the first nuclear plant in Turkey, and according to Rosatom, uh, it's working to the agreed schedule. Now, Russia is also reaching out to other countries Unit 3 of Egypt's first nuclear power station, Aldaba, uh, began full-scale construction in May. A contract was signed last June between uh, Sri Lanka and Rosatom to construct a nuclear power plant that could run two reactors and produce 300 megawatts of electricity. Now, reports in the Russian media at the time uh, suggested that the approval process is pretty much uh, done and construction could start soon. Also, Hungary has announced that its nuclear regulator had granted uh, Rosatom permission to construct two new reactors at their PAX nuclear power station that's in line with their earlier agreement. Now, they've been partners since the days of the Soviet Union, and Hungary is very reliant on nuclear fuel from Russia. Now, let's look at nuclear fuel. Uranium does not enter a nuclear reactor straight out of a mine like coal into a power plant. It cannot be used as a nuclear reactor fuel until it's undergone conversion and enrichment. Now, this is where Russia has the major global position. I mean, uranium ore itself has become very in vogue recently, and its prices have skyrocketed. It recently hit $100 per pound, and that's from its lows in 2011, just after the Fukushima situation. And it, obviously that led to the radical revision of the nuclear plans of many countries, including the suspension of work and decommissioning of other places, like I mentioned Germany. Now, at that time, uranium prices went down to $18 per pound, and in the last few years, they fluctuated between $20 and $30 per pound, which meant the development of explored uranium deposits are unprofitable. However, in 2022, prices began to rise steadily, and on the end of that year, price of uh, had increased by 41% to $49.8 per pound. 
And then in 2020, the prices doubled. Now, this is not just a temporary market surge, but it's a reflection of fundamental market shifts in the global energy balance that are keeping the atomic window open for the next one and a half to two decades, as well as the restructuring of the market for uranium uh, raw materials due to the change in the military political influence of nuclear powers in places that produce it, like the Global South. In 2022, according to the World Nuclear Association, 43% of global uranium production uh, came from Kazakhstan, 14% from Canada, 11% from Namibia, and 9.2% from Australia, also 6.7% from Uzbekistan. Now, political decisions were made uh, recently to abandon Russian nuclear fuel. And Ukrainian Enogoatom, Bulgarian Kozluri, with the Canadian Cameco, aimed at replacing Russian fuel assemblies for nuclear power plants with American ones to destabilize the market. At the same time, calls from the collective West to ban the import of uh, Russian nuclear fuel began to sound increasingly louder. In December 2023, the US House of Representatives voted to limit the import of enriched uranium from Russia. Now, most of the uranium used, uh, enriched uranium, that the United use, uh, States uses to power its uh, nuclear plants is imported. At the time, Russia accounted for around 25% of the supplies, according to the data from the US Information Administration. Another shock to the market was the coup d'etat in Niger, this poor African country, which was a former French colony, provided up to 5% of the world's uranium supply. Now, Niger's uranium reserves were actually under the control of the French corporation Orano. Now, after the coup uh, in 2023, the new authorities stopped exporting uranium uh, ore to France. Now, 5% doesn't sound that much, but against the backdrop of... Um, the attempts to cancel Rosatom, uh, etc., then you're going to see uh, a big change. Now, Russia presents, possesses 40% of the global uranium conversion infrastructure and 46% of the uranium enrichment capacity. The Chinese have 20%, the French and the Canadians have around 12%. So basically, Russia controls almost half of the world's enriched uranium supplies. For Western countries, uranium enrichment has turned into their weakest point. There aren't many enrichment facilities, and Russia leads the world in this procedure. Now, in April, the United States, UK, France, Canada, and Japan established a nuclear fuel alliance. Although the stopping of Russian fuel to reactors is their goal, it's not going to be simple. When are they going to replace it? I mean, this is the West that's still going to be heavily dependent on Russian enriched uranium. So I wouldn't expect sanctions on the Russian nuclear sector anytime soon. As so many NATO and uh, EU members are dependent on it. And as I said before, very few sources to get it from. All said and done, Russia continues to rule the realm along with China. Uh, and the West and its allies are playing catch up. So BRICS nuclear future looks very bright indeed and will continue to power their economies for decades to come. Now, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and do visit the website seobricsinsight.com for lots of articles that my videos are based on. Until the next time, thank you for watching.